controversial. This book was actually considered as very controversial that, you know, even in the first council, second council, this book was actually barred from being in the canon. This book was not considered equal to the authority of the word of God. So why was it so? Was there any clash? Because if you read the book of Romans and Paul's letters, you will see that Paul is professing salvation by grace through faith alone, right? And then when you come to the book of James, you will see that, uh, you know, he's saying that, you know, you your faith is dead if your work does not match it up to that thing. So this is, I know so many theological um, giants have argued on this book and have come to a conclusion that this book is not supposed to be in the Bible. But I believe personally that the Holy Spirit can never do a mistake. And if this book has come into the, the fold of your Bible, the Holy Spirit definitely planned or authored or directed every single script of this book so that it fits perfectly, giving a perfect message to the to individuals and even to the church as a whole. So hold on to your seat belts, not hold on, maybe you know, tighten your seat belts, sit, and we will go through this book uh, for the glory of God. Uh, also would like to request, today we are doing the introduction part. So that's the reason I did not ask you to read the first chapter or second chapter, but next week when we come in, I would request you to read the first chapter of the book. And also, if anyone, if you have any questions related to this subject, please type in your questions now itself so that, you know, I will, after the session, I'll be able to, um, you know, address those uh, questions of you if it is within my spectrum. Uh, but nevertheless, you can type the question. I will definitely, if not this week, next week or in the coming weeks, I would definitely, uh, you know, try to answer the questions. All right. So are we ready? So let's dig in. Let me just start with the PPT. As always, I wish that our study would happen in person. I'm just praying that we will have it in person so that it will be more effective uh, for each one of us. Okay, one second. All right. Can you all see the, see the screen? Can you all see my screen? Yes, Pastor. Okay. All right. So this is the epistle of James. And as I pointed out, is it controversial or this gospel is blunt? Is this, is this letter is pointed or is it some practical things that James is bringing up for the glory of God? Um, so those are the things we are going to see. All right. So let's see a few facts about the epistle of James. Epistle simply means a letter. Okay. So this is the letter of James. And this is the first New Testament book written. If somebody asks you which book was written first, it was not Matthew. It was not Mark. It was not Luke or John, it was the epistle of James. It was written closely within the 20 year range after the ascension of Jesus. Okay, so that is why this book has, um, like at this point of time, the church, the Jewish church is growing and there had been, uh, you know, the persecution is, perse persecution has started and that's the, that's the background of this, this particular book. And you'll be surprised uh, that this book is the first book written and it is not any other books. All right. So coming back to the facts, this book is also known as the Proverbs of the New Testament. 
we do have the proverbs in the old testament right after sam's we had the book of proverbs where a lot of people have put in their wisdom uh pearls into that book and have composed those books now, some of those wisdoms were from solomon from from different authors now in the new testament this particular epistle is known as the proverbs of the new testament you want to see what are the proverbs written I will just go through it one by one, okay? Maybe not a, a like detailed way, but we will see it one by one. One, a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of sea that is blown and tossed by the wind, James 1 verse 6. So a person who does not stand for what is right, but he waves here and there, James gives a beautiful quote for such person. Just as body is dead without breath, so faith is dead without works. James 2.26 Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No. And you can't draw fresh water from salty spring. James 3.12 Don't you realize that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? James 4 verse 4 Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. James chapter 4 verse 7 to 8. And then we have your life is like a morning. Um, one second. Let me just, yeah. Your life is like a morning fog. It is here a while, little while and then gone. James chapter 4 verse 14. So, and the last one, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no. James 5 verse 12. You see, these are all pearls from James. And that's the reason why this book, this is just few of them. I just picked it up from the Bible. But there are so many where if you read the book of James, you will find out that there are this book is actually itself a proverb by itself you know proverbs of the new testament that is what the the the, the scholars have calling this book as the proverbs of the new testament let's move on so the first question when we study this book the question arises who is the author of this book and this thing has been debated for a long time. You will ask, Pastor, why is there so much of debate when it is written that James verse 1, chapter 1 verse 1 says, James, a born servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is clearly written there who wrote this book, right? So why this problem of, you know, authorship? You will know. Yes, this book is written by James. Uh, in Greek, the word for James is Yakobos, and for Hebrew, it is Yaakov. In Malayalam, also, it is called Yaakov. In English, it is, however, James or Jacob. It is written by James, and he mentions it, slave of the Lord. And we know that this is brother of Jesus. Now, how do we con, con or maybe, you know, find out who is this James? Okay, we will see that in the, in the coming um, slides. Written primarily to the Christian Jews scattered. Okay, it is written, if you see that, greetings to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Okay, that is what it is written to Jewish Christians who were scattered because of the persecution. And if you ask me when this is happening, uh, the writer of this letter is actually telling in the context when Stephen was martyred, okay? This is the beginning of persecution. And the persecution is increasing slowly by slowly. Saul, who is known as the, you know, um, as the, the, the persecutor of the church, he is persecuting. And Christians, Acts chapter 7 and 8, we see that Christians in Jerusalem were scattered throughout the Roman world. And this is the background of this, this particular book. Okay. And that is the reason if you read verse 2, you will see that 
count it all joy when you fall into various trials. That's what he's starting this book with. Count it all joy. This is nothing. And verse 3, knowing that, you know, this is all working out for good. So he's encouraging this people that, you know, this is all fine. Don't worry. This persecution which is happening to you, do not worry. This is okay. This is okay. That is what he is saying. So this is the context of this, this letter of James. What is the purpose? Purpose is written in chapter 1 verse 4 where it is saying uh, to encourage the suffering body to stay strong in faith and to be perfect and to be complete. And that should be the goal of every Christian to be perfect and to be complete. Okay, to be perfect and to be complete without reproach. That's what, you know, uh, James is saying. Uh, let's, uh, if, you, if I read this verse, I will actually go through this later. Count it all joy, verse 2, when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And then patience, let it have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. And in this context, the author is saying, but if you lack wisdom, what is the wisdom here? The wisdom here is to be patient. If you lack wisdom, then ask God. He will actually give you liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. Many people take this word out of context and they use this word when exam is going on and we say that, you know what, if anyone of you lack wisdom, there is nothing wrong in quoting this verse during those times. But the actual meaning of this verse is not in the context of gaining wisdom uh, or maybe, you know, doing something. It is in the context of persecution where you are going through some trials, you're going through some pain, you're going through some of the tough situations of your life and it is actually bringing you to your knees and you are actually, you know, bro you are broken inside but outside you are actually showing the fragments of Christ and you are actually asking. That is the sort of wisdom which James is actually writing here. Okay, so as I told you, this book is written by James, but you'll be surprised to know that there are five James mentioned in the New Testament. How many James? There are five James mentioned in the New Testament. Okay, okay. Written by James as what we, we see. But five different men with the same name has been mentioned in the New Testament. Some of this I will, uh, I will just show it. One is James, the brother of John. He's known as the Apostle. James, the Apostle. Okay, this particular James was actually martyred by, by Herod Agrippa 1. It is mentioned in Acts chapter 12 verse 2. So this is not the James who wrote the book of James, because this book was written after this martyrdom. Okay, so this is not the James who wrote this book. So John the Apostle is not the author. And then we see that James, the son of Alphaeus. Okay, James, the son of Alphaeus, he's also mentioned in Mark chapter 3, verse 18. Um, he is also not uh, the author. Some people say that, you know, this James, the son of Alphaeus, is the son of Mary not the mother of Jesus, the son of Mary, who is uh, mentioned in Mark 15, 40. And he's also known as the James the Younger. Okay, James the Younger. So there is uh, James, this apostle, and then there is James the Younger. His name is also known as Clopas, but this is not proven. So the third person I would like to bring to you is James the Younger. Though they, they they argue that this is the same person, but we don't know. It is not written anywhere. So let's take it as a separate person altogether. So we have James, the brother of John, who is known as James the Apostle. Then we have James, the son of Alphaeus. Okay, one of the twelve. known. Okay, and then we have James, the younger. And then we also have James, the father of Judas, mentioned in the Bible in Luke chapter 6, verse 16. James, the father, not Judas Iscariot. This is the father of uh, Judas, the other Judas. So his father's name was also James. And then last, fifth, is James, the half-brother of Jesus himself. Um, and I believe that this James, particular James, the half-brother of Jesus, was the author of this epistle of James. Okay. 
the uh, why did I say so? I will bring it to you in this. Uh, like who was this James? Who was this half brother of James? And we know that from the Gospels that Jesus was definitely the older son of uh, Joseph and Mary. And then we also know that Jesus had brothers and sisters, right? He had brothers and sisters, by the way, when he came into this world. So let's see who this half brother of Jesus is. So I hope you are not confused with James have written this. That is the reason there has been contention uh, over the authorship of this book because there are five James and this book only says that written by James, the born servant of Jesus Christ. That's all it, it is written. We don't know which James have written. So when we, uh, when, the, when the scholars, when they go through the language, when they go through the, the pattern of the letter, they go through the context, they have come to a conclusion that's most probably this is half brother of Jesus, the brother of Jesus himself, who wrote this book. And now let's see who this James is. Okay. So stay tuned. Do not move because this is going to be interesting. Who is this James? And we will see about this particular James today. Let's see. In some of the historical church father's book, this James is mentioned as being so pious a Jewish Christian that he got a name and the name was James the Just. James the Just. So this James is known as James the Just because he was so pious, so in love with Jesus, so humble that people the church members, they labeled him James the Just. Okay. He was actually an unbeliever during the time of Jesus. It is written in John chapter 7 verse 5. Even the brothers of Jesus did not believe in Jesus. That's what it is written. Even the brothers of Jesus did not believe in, in Jesus. So that's it. His brother, so James did not believe in Jesus during the earthly life of Jesus. But his life was transformed as we see in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 15 verse 7. His life was transformed when the resurrected Jesus met and gave appearance to James. It is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 7. Seven. Just want to read it out for you. It says, uh, you know, Paul is saying that, you know, uh, I delivered this message. And, uh, you know, verse 5 says he was seen by Peter, then the 12, then by 500 men. Verse 7 says, and then he was seen by James. You see that? He was seen. So Jesus Christ, when he got resurrected, he was actually, he, he, he actually came to James. And then by all the apostles. So see, actually, if you see that language there in 1 Corinthians 15, 7, James is mentioned aloof. That means he is not mentioned along with the apostles. He is mentioned as separate, like James and then all the apostles. So this is the James where I'm talking to you about. Okay, so he got his life, got transformed by the appearance of Jesus after the resurrection. Okay, he was an unbeliever. He did not believe in Jesus. He thought Jesus is just one random magic guy, you know, maybe a random teacher, maybe a good person, but his life transformed on his first, uh, you know, encounter with Jesus. And that was during, after the resurrection of Jesus, when after Jesus ascended to heaven, uh, sorry, after Jesus resurrected and appeared to, to James. And you will see in Acts chapter 1 verse 14, after the ascension of Jesus into heaven, James was among the believers who gathered in the upper room for the time of prayer. Okay. He was there 
in the upper room. And then we see about this James that he became the chief elder of the church in Jerusalem. And then he also became a leading figure in the Jerusalem council of Acts chapter 15. So if you read Acts chapter 15, we see a prominent James there. Okay. And this is the same James, the brother of Jesus. He became the chief elder of the church and also a leading figure in the Jerusalem council mentioned in Acts chapter 15. And according to Galatians 1 verse 9, he was also considered as an apostle. Yes, he was not the James the apostle, but he was also considered as one of the apostle later. He was also known as peacemaker who led with wisdom and courage. Paul visited him, took advice on his final visit to Jerusalem, which is mentioned in Acts chapter 21 verse 18. Paul also went and visited him. So if this was Paul the Apostle, then whom did Paul visit? Because in chapter 12 of Acts, it is written, Herod killed James. And who is this James? So then we know that this is the brother of Jesus. He was labeled by Paul in Galatians 2 verse 9. He was labeled by Paul as one of the pillars of the church. Okay. By the way, church, Brethren, you can take a screenshot after this uh, whole slide is there. I will just wait for once uh, for 10 seconds. You can actually take this, this, this um, uh, you know, screenshot. So this James was labeled by Paul or maybe even, you know, said he was known as pillars of the church. But what happened? You want to know what happened to this particular James? He was denounced as heretic by the high priest Ananus. He was stripped of all the positions. Okay, he was stripped of all the positions. And then, you know what happened? Very tragic thing happened to this particular James. According to Josephus, by the way, who is this Josephus? I have mentioned to you in the early studies. Uh, this person is a very uh, important person of, um, of Jewish history. Because this person was a historian. He was not a believer. He was a Jewish historian who wrote history books and those history books are available even today. So in, in his book and the book, it is the book's name is Josephus Antiochitis 20.200. It is written that James was first stoned after the high priest stripped him of the position. He was stoned. And then he was taken to the pillar top of the temple and he was thrown headlong down and he died in AD 62. Okay. This is the tragic death of this man of God who actually gave his life for truth. Now let me just give you some of the quotes of some of these people. Okay who one is Joseph itself. This is, this book was written in AD 93. Book number 20 of chapter 9, section 1, written in AD 93, describes the circumstance surrounding James' death. Okay, this is James, the brother of Jesus. Look at what it is written. Ananus, who is the high priest, convened the judges of Sanhedrin and brought before them the brother of Jesus. The one called Christ, whose name was what? James. By the way, this is not in the Bible. This is in the history book, Jewish history book. If you want to know where it is mentioned about Jesus other than Bible, go to the history books. You will know where all it is written about Jesus. So Jesus was not just some fancy story written and composed by some random guy of this universe sitting in one random place. No, it is not some idea evolved by some guy somewhere. You know, he just thought, okay, let me just make a story and let me just make this up. No, this is a real instance which happened in the face of the world. And that is Jesus. So this is the testimony of Josephus, who was not a, who never became a Christian, by the way. Josephus was not a Christian. He was completely against anything. So he was a neutral history writer. Okay, now what he's writing? And then has convened the judges of the Sanhedrin, brought before them the brother of Jesus, the one called Christ. You see the language? 
The language is not inclusive. Language is pointing towards the one called Christ, whose name was James, and certain others, along with James, there were certain other people, and accusing them of having transgressed the law, delivered them up to be stoned. All right. Now, centuries later, Eusebius, one of the church father, okay, now this is a church father, a Christian church father. He wrote in his ecclesiastical history, quoting the early Christian historian. So Hegesippus is a Christian historian who became a Christian. So Eusebius is quoting this historian. He is saying, James became a true witness both to Jews and Greeks that Jesus is the Christ. Just go back a bit what I said to you. In John chapter 7, verse 5, where he himself did not believe in Jesus. And then his life got transformed by an encounter of Jesus. Like Paul on the road of Damascus in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 7. And then we see the, the church people. He was known as James the just, so pious, and he became a true witness to both the Jews and to the Greeks that Jesus is the Christ. All right. I want today, as you read the first words, James chapter 1, verse 1, part A says, James, a born servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. This word actually today, as I was meditating on this, this word really touched me. Okay, this word really touched me. James, being the brother of Jesus, he could have actually established his authority over the church and say, you know what, guys? I know Jesus. I have lived with him. I know his inside out. I am the man who knows him better. You all, have, you all have come afterwards. I know him better. It's so like this. Just imagine when you meet a person and you say, hi, Mr. A. Okay, hi. Okay, as the conversation goes on, suddenly you come to know that, you know, you know certain person which this person also knows. And this person says, oh, you know this person called C? And then this person A says, ha. That person, we are very close to each other. We know for like 10 years, you know, we know for 20 years. And especially we say, no, we are very close that, you know, we studied together. We, 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 we ate together. We played together, right? And that familiarity did not actually go inside James. When he said, I am James. I am the bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. He was my brother. But I am convinced that he is God. And I am transformed by him. Some of us have actually, you know, read this verse called in 1 Peter 2.10, live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Live as God's slaves. The problem happens, including me as a pastor, the problem happens when we feel that this is our right to do and this is what we, we will do it because I am in authority. I can do anything because I am in authority. And that is why Peter mentions this, live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Don't cover evil because you are somebody who is close or maybe you are somebody who is close to Jesus and you know what is going to happen. You know this person very closely and you've been using this freedom to put down to put down certain things. And here, Peter is mentioning, 
don't use your freedom you know today as i was reading uh, this the, uh, the from the book of um, esther i know this verse has been very very familiar verse in esther chapter 4 verse 14 esther 4 verse 14 i will just read it out for you esther verse 4 verse 14 okay this is a small dose of mordecai to esther he says if you remain completely silent at this time relief and deliverance will arise for the jews from another place but you and your father's house will perish yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this when we are in the presence of god we actually should ask this question and we if we are in you may be in the workplace you are in a position or you are in the church you are in a position or you are in your house you are in a position or you are in a locality where you are in position or you are with your friends and they they look up to you and you are placed as a positional head let me just remind you you have been placed as a servant of the lord let me just rephrase it as a slave of the lord jesus christ and this freedom which the lord has given to you let me just make this clear in the jewish in the jewish language so many types of slaves are there one of the type of slave is a slave who is actually you know sold out for like he has been purchased okay he has been purchased and the greek uses a different word for that slave there is another word which is called doulos which is a bond servant okay what do you mean by this bond servant is this this particular slave has been released from the from the obligations but this slave now because he is released and he is free he decides in himself i am though i am free now but yet i am going to serve this master and i will be his bond servant that is the word bond servant he is not entitled to live there he is not you know he is not supposed to be there but he choose willingly to be the slave of the master and that is the same phrase some of your bible translation may use the word instead of um instead of you know slave some of the bible translation may use especially nkg we may use bond servant and what does it mean is though james is saying here though i am the brother though i know him personally i am still willingly suffering and knowing that jesus christ is my lord jesus is my lord i just wrote this you know most of the time when we live we read the word and we have uh, you know this especially in today's world many people have this this uh, intuition to know more okay i just want to know more information i just wrote this up god is not interested in accumulating some spiritual information but he is more interested in some spiritual transformation i repeat God is not just interested in some, you know, you accumulating some of the spiritual information and you, oh, I know certain things. I know certain theologies. I know, uh, you know, how to read Greek and Hebrew. I know how to preach well. I know how to lead worship. I know how to exhort from the word. I can do it better. God is not interested in those information. God is interested in spiritual transformation. Just like this guy who never believed in Jesus he came the one that one you know encounter with jesus after the resurrection changed his perspective he thought he is my brother but now he he sees himself as a bond servant of the lord jesus christ doulos of the lord jesus christ and if you see the book of james he being the authority he is bringing up issues in the church like nobody else he is bringing up thing being the leader he is 
the leader of the church being the leader he is bringing up he's like i don't care about whoever is this but these are the problems if you see in you know uh, rich verse 9 says rich and poor he's like saying why is there you know so much disparity between rich and poor verse 9 okay and then verse 21 he's saying everybody is you know listening to the word but we are not doers of the word everybody's just listening just listen everybody's listening everybody's happy oh i had a good message today but nobody is a doers of the word and look at where chapter 2 he is pointing about favoritism he's saying i am actually you know i this person is very close to me because we both have the same wavelength you know what so that's the reason i will support this person and rest all i don't care favoritism let me just tell you favoritism of any sort is evil is sin and james is pointing right there he's saying beware of personal favoritism beware of such thing okay you may have known this person for a long time and the person who has come now is a new person you don't know that not that person but you are supposed to trust in the lord and not show any personal favoritism. Or sometimes what happens is, he is my son. He is my daughter. And we have an extra support and a leverage given because he is my blood. Any sort of favoritism will end you up in a, in a misery. You'll be surprised to know that God doesn't see any, especially with regard to, you know, the parents, children relationship. Some, some parents are very positive about their children. Some parents are very positive that, you know, they cannot take anybody correcting their children. They cannot take it. How dare can somebody correct? My child is always right because I am always right. Not knowing that the children are heritage from the Lord. You and me are just the caretaker or just the manager of those children. The actual honor of our children is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know why? Because he formed them. He made them. He provides for them. He gives them growth. He gives them maturity. He is behind your child. You know, you don't have to become sensitive or, you know, show favoritism for this now look at verse 14 saying faith without work is dead you are preaching about faith and faith and faith but it is not reflecting in your life james is saying guys you are in a wrong place chapter 3 is talking about tongue okay that's the reason i like this book because this book is so amazing he's saying that you are talking and behaving to everybody else as if you are the most spiritual person, but your tongue you cannot control. What use is your spiritual life? Verse chapter 3. Okay. And then verse 13 onwards of the same chapter, he is comparing the heavenly wisdom with the worldly wisdom. The heavenly wisdom is in meekness of wisdom, is in meekness. The worldly wisdom is envy, self-seeking sensual demonic and that is what but verse 17 says the wisdom that is from above is like pure peace gentle willing to yield full of mercy good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy and chapter 4 talks about pride he says you know what pride is the root cause for strife there is strife among people that is because of pride you know who i am you know, from which background I'm coming from, you know, who, are, who which pastor was, you know, who baptized me, you know, where I got baptized, which church I was part of, you know, which organization I am part of, pride. Okay. He says that, you know, God resists the pride, proud and give grace to the, to the humble. And then verse that same chapter last, he says, when you say about, you know, don't boast about tomorrow, but say, if it is the Lord's will, let it happen. Okay, and then verse chapter 5 is talking against the rich people who are oppressing the poor and judging the poor. And he's saying, be patient and then ending this book. Let me stop it here with one small quote. And that is the same quote which I wrote it. 
God is not interested in your spiritual, accumulating spiritual information. He is interested in your spiritual transformation. God will not see how much degree you have acquired, how much wealth you have acquired, how much, you know, you have been influential in this society, how many, how many friends you have, or how many people you have brought to the church, or what position you hold. And that doesn't matter. God doesn't see any of these things. Yes, these things are important as a part of your standing. These things can be of, you know, good, good thing for you. But God is interested in your spiritual transformation, your meekness, your gentleness, you know, your love for the people, you showing no partiality, you giving no thing, you know, no, no, you're not budging for the pressure and to give in for the wrong things. You're standing as we read in Esther and such a time like this, you have been appointed for what? So that you will do the will of God. You will not show like James, you know, you will not be like, you know, I am the brother of Jesus. You know, I know him from very small. I know him. So this guy cannot be like the God and all, you know, I know him. No, no, no. He's saying himself in verse one, starting with, I am the doulos of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all for today. And I hope that in the coming days, we will see some of, some of the, some of more informations and some of the things that James is actually why and also we'll see why this book became so controversial that it took centuries so that this book would come in the fold of the Bible and we will see that in the coming weeks stay tuned and this is now over to you all if there is any questions or any comment or if you want to add something or you want